on today's show, the Dallas Mavericks find another way to win a game in overtime for the first time this season. What happened? How did Kyrie take over? How did Luka defer? We'll talk about all that and more on today's Locked on Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked on Mavericks. Now back to the Mavericks. NBA champion. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. You should not. Loyalty never fades away. You're locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and NBA channel manager of the Locked On Podcast Network, where we let it ride. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen today. With the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform. Leave a five-star review, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below. This episode is brought to you by PrizeFix, the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizefix.com slash LockedOnNBA to use that code, all lowercase, LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Dallas Mavericks win. And joining me on the post game. What you got for me, Reggie? That game was insane. That's insane basketball. Absolutely insane basketball we just witnessed. And... We're going to talk about it. We'll talk about Kyrie taking over. We'll talk about Luka Doncic. We'll talk about the uh, Exum. X going to give it to you again. <laughs> X, I mean, how many times do we have to see this guy hit that insane shot like that, like a three like that? They just keep leaving him wide open, 50%. Yeah, I'm daring him. We'll talk about all that. We'll get into it. And, uh, man, you just got to let it ride a little more. Absolutely. I had, like... How many people could say let it ride to us? Well, one one gentleman yeah. let both of us know, I think, a total of three, four times that we needed to let it ride before they had even completed yeah, the like, comeback. Even, even when they were losing, he was like, you're going to let it ride tonight. Even if they lose, like, no, it's not how it works. It's not how it works. He was a, he was a soothsayer. Him and Tim Cato, soothsayers. That is correct. Tim Cato called this game and called the win. I think four. Four people. Five, oh, my goodness. Five people let it Insane. ride? Insane. Because there was a one dude who just yelled it at you from across <laughs> the arena. And I'm for that. You know, I'm for it. Oh, my gosh. The Mavs get the win against the Houston Rockets. Oof. They win 147 to 136. Just the third time this Mavs team has scored 140-plus points yeah. since the trades. And it went into overtime. First time we've seen an overtime game from the Mavericks this season. They score 18 points in overtime. Just an absolute insane game for the Dallas Mavericks. And we've got to start with Kyrie Irving. It's got to. It's got to start with Kyrie because, you know, there were times when people were concerned about what Kyrie would bring to this team. He was a risk coming in. I even asked yeah. Nico Harrison at the time of the trade, what, do you, what would you say to people who think this trade is a really big risk? And Nico Harrison just very confidently says, I don't see a risk at all. I actually see this as a risk if we don't do it. And you know what? To be honest, he's been completely right because so far with yeah. Kyrie and especially in a game like tonight where I, I think it, it's definitely his highest scoring game, it's probably his best game as a Maverick. I'm going to say, so far. It's great. It's great, dude. Dude, it's great. It's great. It's great, broski. Bro, name it. It's great. It's great. It's great, bro. It's great. It's great. It's great. This life's great, bro. I have no complaints. I don't. I have no complaints, Reggie. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Um, I was like, is this becoming cliche? Because I've said it a few times, but this is what you get Kyrie Irving for. Yeah, right. Like, this is what you get Kyrie Irving for on a night where early on, it was very evident that Luka Doncic was not in the right space. I don't know what exactly it was. He wasn't quite right. I mean, we saw him go to that patented left uh, step back that he likes early in that mm. first quarter, and it didn't go, and it didn't look like it was like even close necessarily. And I know that from where we were sitting, uh, there was kind of that feeling like, oh, no. And Kyrie Irving is a guy who, especially once you notice that there are some weaknesses in a defense, he is capable of attacking those. And this is where you're just like, hey, we have another guy that we can turn this thing over to. And they did that, and he delivered in spades, right? I mean, what was it 48 points first time since January of 03 that he scores this many Is points? Is that true? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't even realize and that. so, like, <laughs> when it was necessary, you know that Luka Doncic is the type of player that when necessary, he yeah. can get you what you need. It's so great knowing that you have another star player that absolutely lives up to that exact same hype where when necessary, he will get you. And, I mean, with difficult shots, yes. um, you know, against incredible defense. I, I mean, the Rockets, you got to give them some love in that regard. Not too much love. Don't get, you know, carried away. But 
Like Kyrie Irving in the in the course of that was absolutely just dismantling what was a very good defensive team with a good de- defensive game plan for your Mavericks. Yeah, was it the best defense played by an NBA team this season where the winning where the team against them scored 147 points? It might have been. <laughs> it might have been. I like, can't say that. Like, I haven't oh, watched man. all the games. I feel like the Rockets played such good defense. The Mavs scored almost 150 points, like what used to be an all-star score. <laughs> right. That's that's the, especially with the weird whistle. All right, we have time. We'll get. We, we have time. We have, we have time. But, we have time. But with but with yeah. Kyrie, and it was just clutch bucket after clutch bucket, and yeah. they just kept putting Jalen Green on him, and he was like, okay. Well, no, they weren't putting Jalen Green on him. Jalen Green, I believe, was covering Derrick Jones Jr. at one point. Like they had him elsewhere, but the Mavericks knew, hey, this the is switch. a way that we can switch, yeah. and we can go and attack. Like they they saw that ability to hunt, and one of the things about matchup hunting is you got to be able to take advantage. And I don't even want to say more times than not. It felt like every damn time yeah. Kyrie was able to get to his spot, whatever that spot was, and you know, put the shot down, whether it was an easy shot or difficult shot or, you know, all Madden shot, as I like to call it for those of you <laughs> Madden players out there. Uh, Kyrie Irving, spectacular night, three, all three levels, um, and especially getting downhill against a team that does not have a center but has the athleticism to contend at the rim. 48 points, two assists. That's like <laughs> – two assists. that is the ultimate, like, chucker stat line. But it was necessary because yeah. they, they were taking away passes. They were staying home. They were playing one-on-one, and – they allowed the switches, and the switches early on were not good for the Mavericks in either direction. Yeah. And then eventually the Mavericks turned that. In the second half, we've seen this over and over again. The Mavericks turn you know, their, their weak points into strengths. Rockets only scored 23 points in that fourth quarter, only seven in overtime. This defense warms up. They eventually they warm up. They figure out what you're doing, they, uh, and then they attack you, it feels like, defensively. But we, with Kyrie, just, like, just an amazing – his ability to – his ability to figure out, all right, we need a bucket right here and to just go get it. The pull-up transition threes. Yes. That gives so much life and energy, especially to this arena. There was a couple times when he hit that one three late that ended up being a two uh, that just gave the re- arena so much yes. life in here because it, it felt everybody was kind of clenched for a long time trying to figure out if the Mavs were going to win this game or not. Yeah, and I, I think what that speaks to is actually not Kyrie star player. That's Kyrie heady veteran. Mm. Right, like yes, that yeah. that was right. the like savvy veteran portion of it, right? The, he was one-on-one, and we've seen Kyrie finish that at the rim, but I think he understood that extra point is valuable in this moment and what that's going to do to enliven an arena that it felt dead in that first quarter. And yeah. I, like, I think that the ways in which this arena lit up, in fact, I don't remember, was it that shot in particular that was probably the loudest pop that I've heard in the last few times that I've been in this arena? And I've seen some, I mean, the Kyrie well, the, shot included. The Kyrie shot was. Right? <laughs> and so... It, that it, was not, not as much of a pop because it was more like, what? What? <laughs> what? Just, and, and so, did we just beat Denver? Yeah, it felt like there were so many instances, whether it's, you know, what decision there. Or even, I understand you mentioned the, you know, lack of assists here. There was times where he absolutely could have kicked it out but understood. I can get to my spot and I know that I can get a shot over this guy. And yeah. he knew what was necessary and he did exactly that. There's a lot of kudos that needs to be uh, given to Kyrie Irving from a lot of different people that – you know, when asked when this trade was made, as you mentioned, the Nico Harrison, there were some people that did not have that level of belief um, in Kyrie Irving, and he's delivered in this game in particular, but all the way across, I think, in, in big ways. And the best part about this, I think, and, you know, they get the win, Kyrie, amazing game. At the end of the game, Luka and Kyrie do the do the arms over. <laughs> oh, are we, is this, is this, are we, are we recreating this right now? <laughs> I think I think we might be. He did the arm over, like arm over Luca, and they like were walking out together, and then Kyrie just starts calling everybody to midcourt. Yes, he starts calling all the other players, all the other Mavericks to midcourt. They all get to midcourt, and they all kind of huddle around. They all celebrate, and then they all celebrate Exum, and they're pushing Exum, and they're excited for him because he hit the shot yeah. to to put it into overtime, and then. Exum starts like skipping off the court, and then PJ and Jaden Hardy are, are arm in arm. I, pu- I posted this on Twitter at Nick Van Exit, and uh, and they're like skipping and kind of singing off court too. Like Yo. this team, the chemistry and Kyrie like bringing them all together felt like a really really good moment yeah, for this team. It's reminiscent of which of these games in the past three where you know Kyrie's out here as people are celebrating, letting them know one more stop. Right? Yeah. He is that veteran that I don't remember if you remember we were having the conversation of like who is the guy that's going to hold everybody accountable? Who's going to be the guy on the court? that the locks him in and the leader guy and Kyrie Irving has grabbed a hold of that and he's he, it's showing dividends in in that way but then also in other ways where he's able to pull this team together and it's I mean we've seen this happen before right the 2022 Western Conference Finals run you saw the team band together and in that same way you're seeing it with different personas different personalities but it feels a lot the same that these guys are all on the same page and I think that's a 
part of what allows them to dig deep is that that feeling that they have for each other. Absolutely. And it's reminiscent of 2022. Yeah. It reminds me of that team when we saw this team really have the chemistry and come together. And so coming up, let's talk about how the Mavs got to this because this game was weird and <laughs> wild in a bunch of different ways. And we'll talk about the refs. We'll talk about the techs. We'll talk about the calls. Yeah. We'll talk about uh, half the Rockets team feeling like they're about to foul out. We'll talk about all that kind of stuff and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks daily fantasy made easy. You can go to Prize Picks right now and you pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. You're playing against the projections. You're not having to play against other people around the world. March is over, but the biggest moments in college basketball tip off the month of April. Be part of the action on Prize Picks, both men and women's college basketball. Shout out to South Carolina winning that game today. And uh, you can go get in on that as well. Tons of baseball stuff as well. I'm going to call Reggie back in. Reggie, Reggie, come back in. Hello. Uh, let's go prize picks. Let's do some Rangers stuff. Rangers versus the Astros on Monday. Adoles Garcia, 7.5 hitter fantasy score. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, definitely up Adoles on that. is going to. 100%. Corey Seager, 7.5. Same or more than Adoles. Let's, let's do that. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go more. I'm going to go more. More? Okay. Yeah. And Marcus Simeon, 7.0 hitter fantasy score. <sighs> I feel like I'm 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 just playing the Moors, but it, I I like especially the way that this uh the, the in the latter half of games uh, against these Rangers or not play Rangers it. but the Astros play bullpen it. yeah I, I'll, I'll definitely play that there you go you can play that on PrizePicks.com right now if I put down twenty bucks I could win ninety five mm. on that play right now if I want to do more on all those Rangers hitters and hopefully they get there so go check out PrizePicks.com use that code Lockdown NBA that's all lowercase Lockdown NBA for a first deposit match up to hundred dollars again PrizePicks.com slash Lockdown NBA. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you for uh, for listening to the show, checking it out. Go check out the Lockdown Sports Today and Lockdown Sports Dallas YouTube channels, as well as the Amazon Fire TV channels, all kinds of great stuff on there. All right, Reggie, this game was just unhinged <laughs> in so many different ways. A mess. Well, let's start in where the Mavericks were unhinged, and that was the first quarter. The Mavs come out. And they allow 42 points to the Rockets in the first quarter. They only scored 27 themselves. The Mavericks just did not look like they were in it at all. It was a complete magnets game in the, in the first quarter where the Rockets were hitting everything. They're shooting 60% from, from the field. They had shot 5 of 11 from, from 3 in that, first, in that first quarter. And it just looked like the Mavs didn't have it. And I even said to you, and I, saw, I said to Tim Cato and others, this team doesn't have it. Yeah. Just don't have it today. And... Mavs teams of past normally wouldn't. They would have a quarter like that or have a half like that, and then all of a sudden they would just be done and give up. But this team is completely different. What did you see in that first quarter? Well, one, uh, defensively, Rough. or I guess speaking for the uh, on the Rockets side, like they were, as you mentioned, knocking down shots. But in addition to that, they have a lot of athleticism and speed that they were able to use. And so we know the Mavericks, you know, their point of attack defense – not necessarily the greatest at all times, but this defense has been formulated to where let's funnel this into the bigs. Well, that wasn't really a working philosophy within the course of this game, yeah. as Gafford was not very effective in this game, unfortunately. Um, and foul trouble. Yeah, there, that played in as well because the likes of Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, they were turning that corner very easily. And so then quick. when those guys get up, they can uh, contend with a big in the paint. And then in addition to that, the Rockets were doing a great job with, like, backdoor cuts that was catching the Mavs yeah, off guard. Them. And so I think that there's there's a level of credit to be given to Jason Kidd in changing the way that they play defense as well, right? Like, there had to be an adjustment because because of the way they were shooting and they were getting downhill. You weren't taking anything away. And so yeah. I, they, they shifted the way that they were playing. That was very evident after that first quarter. I know a lot of us want them to play big, and not having Lively makes it hard for the Mavericks to play yes. as big as they want to yeah. and as big as they've been when they've been effective. But they needed to go small in this game yeah. because the Rockets don't have Shingoon. Jock Lando doesn't play that much. I mean, how much did he end up playing in this game? It didn't feel like he was that impactful. There was a point, I think, like – He played 15 minutes, same, yeah. as, same as Gafford, basically. Yeah. And so because of that, you're playing all of a sudden against this, like, freewheeling – all right, everybody, everybody is so, all the Rockets defenders are so fast. And yeah. then on offense, they're so fast, too. And then they're cutting you back door. And you you just got to be able to keep up, basically, on that point. And so the Mavericks had to switch. They put Maxi in. They played P.J. Washington at the five a couple times. And yeah. they needed to make that kind of switch and hope that the Rockets wouldn't shoot 60% the rest of the, <laughs> the, rest of the game. Which, I mean, they ki kind of didn't? Kind of? But they finish. They, they finish with 50. Oh, sorry, they finished they at 49 under, and a half. Yeah, the Mavs end up shooting better than that. Yeah. So this was not a Magnets game at all at, at the in the end. 
because uh, the Mavs ended up shooting really well. The, the, the magnet the stayed on each uh, on each rim, and so <laughs> at, at half it, it that's around. No, yeah, that's probably that's probably what it was. The, but that also speaks to it, right? Like it felt early on, and I think that obviously there's not really a way to quantify this, but being in the arena, you can agree with me or tell me I'm wrong here. It felt like you could see like the demeanor of the team wasn't in the right place for, for the Mavs sure. in oh, that that's, first quarter. That's why I said it, they weren't going to win. Right, just tell their body language. And with Luca, even coming off of a rest day, like still did not look like and. No. There was something about them not letting go of the rope and keeping the, keeping themselves in it. And I don't know who exactly to attribute that to. Maybe you just give it to everyone. They stuck in it and they continued to compete. And I wonder how much of that was because of the nature of this chippy game with a team that I don't know if like they don't like each other is too cliche for sports, but it didn't feel like they liked each other. And that helped. Like Once you have somebody putting a, sho- a shoulder or a forearm <laughs> somebody, check into say, somebody's face. Somebody you know? needs to ask Ahmed Thompson <laughs> where that comes from because, man, he had it. Because, oh, uh, First quarter, about four minutes left in the game, uh, all of a sudden, Ahmed Thompson just kind of elbow checks Maxi right yeah. in the throat, and he falls down, and then they, the refs go and review it, and then they go and review the play right before that, too, where Maxi got pushed down, yeah. which I found really interesting that they, the refs went back. Uh, Ahmed Thompson gets a flagrant two. He ends up getting ejected, and that he totally should have because it just didn't make any sense how no. upset he got and how much he just, like, went at Maxi's throat, basically. Uh, and that, we think, like you'd think that that would have woken them up. That wasn't even really the moment, necessarily right? It still took them a little while to, to get juiced they, up. Yeah, maybe they woke up then, but they hadn't like fully engaged in the game yet. Because, uh, but that was they were down eleven twenty eight at that point, and they still finished the first quarter down twenty seven forty two. Mavs had eight turnovers in that first quarter too. They were yeah. just, it was just real sloppy. Like I said it on sub, I said it to subtext. I texted everybody that. Uh, it's just real sloppy, weird things where, like, yeah. Luca was would be dribbling, like, just like a straight-up dribble, and he would get the ball stolen from him. He had multiple turnovers yes. with just a dribble. And then Kyrie was missing free throws, and he was losing the ball, like, just right. completely losing the ball. It's just weird stuff that just is normally givens for the Mavericks that weren't happening. Yeah. And so that's why I thought that they, they weren't going to win this game. And then what you mentioned earlier about there's just something about this team that, that came back and, like, you know, the, I think it's belief. It's belief. Yeah. You know? like They, they like, tap the sign. I was going to say, you have a yellow shirt on, and you have, like, the, the Ted Lasso belief. That's right. Yeah. Just, just, ta- just tap 100%. It. Like, it, it felt like they, they believe. And whether that comes from Jason Kidd, whether that comes from just confidence yeah. in Luka be, in, being awesome, Kyrie being a leader, Markeith Morris being a leader, you know, like, whether it comes from – whatever it comes from, the guy's starting to hit threes. Right. Guys feeling confident in their own game. This team just has a belief. And when you have a belief like that, and you have two stars that you can push and rely on and all that, like – you could do anything. I like I, we're, we're we're doing the, I feel like I've done the same kind of show so many times at the end of the season because it's just been true. This Mavs team continues to find ways to win a game. First overtime game of the season for the yes. Mavericks and they were the last team in the NBA that hadn't had an overtime game yet and they found a way to win this game and they did. And I think maybe the reason why that happens in this situation is because this is a, a really good closing team. Except yeah. in closing in this situation was getting yourself into the opportunity to go into overtime. And then overtime gives you an opportunity to show that closing dynamic once again, but obviously putting you over. Man, it incredible, an incredible effort by like mentally from this team. And I don't know if they came in not, you know, overlooking Houston or whatever. But you could tell they kicked it into a different gear. And another aspect where the belief definitely landed for me, and I don't know if this was where you wanted to go ultimately, was those others, in a way, yeah. they, they continue to stay ready and to, to impact the game. Because, as you mentioned, like Kyrie Irving went into a place, and maybe it's also like um, Houston being able to jump passing lanes where he, he was able to go, like, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and make plays happen. But those other guys stayed ready. Yeah, right? PJ was ready to shoot, still taking confident shots. Dante Axum. It didn't feel like he put the ball on the ground necessarily as much as sometimes it feels like, and you know, went he had up a couple moments in this game though where, like, it felt like it felt like like a week ago or a couple weeks ago there were games where you just go, man, he didn't even drive one time. Yeah, he put it on the deck a couple. Well, times, I guess but. put it on the deck. Sure, I, I was yeah. talking about like where he hesitates and like he'll take that setup dribble and yeah. then really see and you almost oh, wonder. A shot. Yeah, yeah you'll yeah, wonder yeah, if yeah, he like, really wants to put that up. He seemed to take shots a little bit more confidently. I think sure. with their backs against the wall, everybody was like, this is going to be all hands on deck. And uh, look. At, I hate to like just harbor, you just stay on mentality, but the mentality of this team was really strong over the course of this game. Well, it, that's what keeps them in games, yeah. and their mentality has been fragile. Like last year, yeah. that's one of the things that just really killed them is just their mentality and their belief. I talked, how many times did I talk about? And one of the reasons why I was like ready to move on from Jason Kidd, yeah, at, in the middle of this season at, at a certain point because like at a certain point he was just like you know 
what's the point? Like, um, <laughs> like <laughs> Jason Kidd was just like at the end of it, like I'm not playing. I'm watching, just like you guys. And he was like, he didn't believe in the team. And I thought Jason Kidd did not believe in the team last season, and the team didn't believe in themselves, and then they missed the entire postseason. And this year, they do believe in their team, and it's a completely different looking team. Is is this time for out collectively our mea culpa? Because it feels like they, in the same ways that <laughs> Jason Kidd has sat back and watched this team and allowed them to figure things out they felt like they were capable of figuring some of this out on the court. Now, of course, I'm not trying to take away his agency because, as I mentioned, like the defensive shift that happened. Like, There's a lot of times yeah. where we go, what is Jason Kidd doing? That's one tangible <laughs> that I can, I can point to. But it did feel like they decided on the court themselves. And some of that, yeah. you have to say, maybe that is a factor of – the Zen master. Am I going to do this again? Uh, oh, but the Zen, no. the Zen master no, of like, I can't, allow, I, can't be, I can't be seen <laughs> this, with this take. This is not my show. Uh, <laughs> no, but the, the idea of allowing these guys to figure themselves, figure themselves out on the court. And so, I mean, okay, I'll come back. You, you got, you got to give, <laughs> I'm trying to give the credit or, or, or all the way around widely in yeah. this instance. No, I mean, if we're going to say that, you know, yeah. Uh, Matt. Oh, wow. You're just like, let me move past that one. Okay. I'll, gotcha. I'll, I, I give, give, I've given Jason Kidd credit. <laughs> I don't know how much credit to give him. That's, and that's fair. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how much. Uh, and then you got a, a Luca technical at the end of the first, at the end of the first quarter <sighs> with Dylan Brooks got his second foul. Luca turned around and he said, finally, he finally got a shot or he finally got a, a foul and Luca got a technical. I think it's, we think it's his 13th. Some Mavs PR will, will correct us, but right. and so coming up, let's get into how the, the others, the others that you mentioned. Right. How did they make big impact on this game? Let's talk about Exxon. We'll talk about P.J. Washington, Derek Jones Jr. Let's talk about all those guys. Maxi even. We'll talk about all those guys and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. It's not just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion, billion professionals, which makes the best place to hire. So, Gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Go check out LinkedIn. They know that small business owners, you have a bunch of hats that you're wearing. You're trying to cover all kinds of different positions and jobs. You can't hire yourself, but if you've got some, you've got one position, that can mean so much for your business. So check out LinkedIn Jobs. It's constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They just launched a feature that helps you write your job descriptions for you. That can be very difficult. Making the process even simpler and quicker. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown MBA. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions, they do apply. Shut it down. Oh, Let's go. All right, Reggie. We got we got we got stuck there for everyone on the video. There was, there was a little bit of a jump cut. Our, our power just got taken out, but we're back. We're, we're back. They didn't appreciate that Luca Tech comp. No, they, no. They're, the Mavs were like, you're talking about Luca's technicals? We don't want the NBA to know. Power. Gone. Just, <laughs> just took it out on us. The others in this game stepped up in a huge way, yeah. uh, in, a, in a big way. The Mavs, they didn't really, they didn't have that third scorer that really popped. And I talked about that a couple days ago on the show, that the Mavs don't really have that guy to be the third scorer, and that player has not emerged. Tim Hardaway has not been that guy in a while. Jaden Hardy hasn't taken that leap. Exum has not been that same kind of scorer that they had when, when Kyrie was out. But they got contributions from, from Exum making that huge three. Uh, he What did he finish with, 14 points? He finished 14 points, nine rebounds in this game. He had some just big moments where they, they needed a bucket, and he got one. P.J. Washington hit a couple of threes in the overtime. He had 14 points, 13 boards in this game, and a couple blocks, and a huge block on Jock Landale, yeah. where he then finished the play on the other end, too. Uh, man, the others, like the, the role players, just they're they're filling in their roles really well. Yeah, and I mean, as the team continues to play together, it ends up almost being a third player by committee at times, which can be a little dangerous because you don't necessarily yeah. know who shows up per se, but. Because of the way that this team is playing together, like they just everybody needs a little bit. You know, if everybody pulls a little bit of the chain, ultimately you can get some get somewhere. And so we saw the ways. And you mentioned exit putting the ball, a ball on the deck, understanding where they can attack and knowing who can attack those things, and allowing that person to shine and star in their role. I thought really helped them in this game. I mean, minor critiques of various players that you could maybe put up, but ultimately, I mean, even Maxi on the short roll, being able to distribute and find the corners where yeah. you ultimately had some openings. PJ. Oh. Oh, that, one, that one where he should have dunked it. <laughs> Maxi could have dunked it and instead kicked it out. <laughs> Who was it, PJ or somebody? It, made was, it, P, it was PJ oh. in, the, in the left corner. But, hey, <laughs> I mean, PJ went and, uh, you know, 
he rewarded him for that pass. And I think that's that's the thing is everybody's holding everybody up. So it's it's a big credit to those guys. And I mean, Maxi also took on quite a responsibility defensively. He played. Huge. I mean. He, he played a decent amount of minutes. He played a few minutes more, obviously, 30. with overtime uh, included. But he had to be a, you know, a, a stopper at the rim, which is not necessarily exactly what he is, while also handling the switching and all those things. And he handled that, he handled that smoothly. So a lot of credit is due to the rest of the guys on this team. Absolutely. And I think it, it is that – it's that foursome of – it's PJ, it's – Derek Jones Jr., Dante Exum, and Maxi Kleba. Yeah. Like those four guys, they're interchangeable around Luca and Kyrie. You can play any any four of them together. They're, they've been playing small. And like they can just do so many good things defensively. They're playing right. so well defensively right now. The switching of the Rockets and how the Rockets, they, they just play a bunch of perimeter guys. They, they don't have any bigs really. We talked about Jock Lando didn't really play. Shangun has been out for a while. And when you play against guys like that, you have to have guys that are versatile defensively, be able to switch a bunch and yeah. be able to uh, catch up and rotate and recover. And they just they did it uh, just enough. I, I'm not going to say the Mavericks had like an amazing offensive game, 100, no. 130 or defensive game, 136 points for the Rockets. But when you have those four guys, uh, they just did so many great things. And I'm seeing a lot of, I saw a lot of complaints and, and bemoaning about Maxi on Twitter. And like, you've got to watch both sides of the ball on on stuff like this, right? Like. Maxi made such an impact defensively on this game, right. just staying in front of certain Rockets and like not like there was no weak point in the Mavericks defense except for except for Luca at times because of his lateral like he's he's yeah. struggling laterally yes. a lot right now and I think it's because of injuries. You and I were talking about that during the game. Like he just doesn't like wish he could move his feet a little bit better yes, because it, it just I think it's because of the injuries, the legs. Like he's had problems with both of his legs this whole last part of the season, even before the season. Right. And so, uh, but. With with Maxi, I thought that he was he played really good uh, on on the defensive end. Even if he didn't give you the like he didn't hit shots on the other end. He hit one three. Yeah, he turned down a couple of things at the rim. Uh, but man, you have those four guys, and they just they can uh, they got the wings now. They got also, the wings. Also, all four of those guys. On both sides, right? We talk about yeah. the offensive impact. All four of those guys are all four of those guys in your defense for offense switching that Jason Kidd kind of employed late in that yeah, game. All four of those guys. Him. And really the big thing about that was, as you mentioned, it wasn't all the way around a great defensive night. Although I will, I do want to mention the idea that the Rockets just took some difficult shots and made them long twos, they really threes. Did. Um, they did some of that. But at the same time, when you needed a stop, you got – timely stops even if you didn't get a ton of stops and a lot of that is because these guys played their roles you know really helped off in the right times like one of the things when the, during that western conference finals run is that you know your defense moved on a string the the right reactions and those types of things happen and this was one of those games where there were times where and i know there was one of the situations where maxi is fouls whoever's down there for the rockets but you already see, it might have been DJJ or it might have been PJ, I can't remember in this moment, those guys coming over to help contest from behind as well. Like, these guys are working in tandem and making it so that no one person is playing defense, even in a one-on-one -on -one or what we would typically consider a one-on-one -on -one situation. So a lot of credit to those guys because I think those guys are the glue pieces that make the defense work even better. And it's when this Mavs defensive scheme is working the best. A lot of people have asked me, like, try to explain the Mavs scheme. It's like it's – it's really hard to explain on a podcast. It's more of just like you've got to read, you've got to react, and you've got to recover. That's like it's yes. like the three things about their defense is that okay, somebody gets you know a, a screen on them. Okay, you've got to decide: are we switching this? Are we not switching this? And then when somebody is, then the low man, whoever is the, like the closest to the rim, basically has to come over and help. And then if somebody helps there, then somebody else has to rotate over and go back to, to that guy's man. And then at, at a certain point, like Pete, there was a there's a play. Where PJ, I can't remember, it was fourth quarter. I wrote it down. Uh, but there's a moment, yeah, fourth quarter, 548 left, where PJ Washington defended three players with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> and three, he defended three players with the ball. Uh, Fred Van Vliet, Whitmore, and I think it was Jalen Green, or it could have been somebody else. But like, he's defending and he stopped all of them and they got a shot clock violation. Like, when the Mavs defense is working at its, at its best, you get a bunch of movement, you get, and everybody's covered at a certain point. And it just takes a certain level of, like, miscommunication and slow steps and uh, second-guessing for you to not get to that, that man you're supposed to rotate to correctly for the defense to just fall apart. And so that's why when you have these, like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it again. Uh -oh. I'm, I'm apologizing in advance. That's why when you have, like, a Christian Wood that's just completely lost defensively at times. It's not my turn. <laughs> <laughs> then the defense completely falls apart. Or when Luca's not, I'll give, I'll, I'll do Luca. Yeah. When Luca's not engaged defensively, 
the defense completely falls apart because then that you have that one loose like if you have one weak like link in the chain it just completely breaks down uh, and so but in this game like you had everybody locked in and when they believe like this when everybody's locked in when those four you know guys we mentioned are defending really well then it, the defense can work really well and you can have a really solid defense like a Jason Kidd defense and one more thing that I'd like to put in here is I know oh, that we Did you say one more thing? One more thing. Oh, as we're as we're it's uh, really it's really close to my yeah, heart. Yeah. That, that um happens. I think going back to the mentality, the idea of sticking with sticking in the game matters in particular because the whistle was so weird. It and was. we've yeah. seen things like that take them out of games. That's right. When That's a good point. you know they're getting weird calls or when you get a tech that you don't think you deserve like, we've seen that take them out of the – and specifically it shows up defensively because now you're less likely to make – you know, give that extra effort and push yourself to be in the right places. That didn't happen tonight. Like, they continued to push through all of those things, weird whistles, fouls here that weren't fouls in other situations, and they, they stayed the course, they stayed on the game plan, and ultimately they are rewarded at the end because they were able to get back, get into overtime, and then win this game. Yeah, the, the great point about the defense. We haven't talked about that in weeks. You know, like it yeah. hasn't even been a, a conversation about, oh, this team just hangs their head on the other end when the calls aren't going their way. It just hasn't happened. And yeah. maybe they've just been ratcheting it up because, you know, all right, we've got to win these games because of the standings and all this. Right. Like, we can't be on our – like, can't be on our BS. Almost almost said it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be on our BS. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, I almost went 21 boy. Savage there. Very good. <laughs> uh, they can't be on it. And then – the threes, too. Yeah. This team used to live and die by the three, and they literally lived and died by the three because their like, body language and everything, they would just die and hang their heads and just like, ugh, when they didn't hit threes. And they weren't hitting threes at the beginning of this game, and they didn't hang their heads. They, right. they stuck with it, and that belief has just taken them to another level. I'm just going to say belief over and over again because, really, that, that's what it is. Like, this team believes. Yeah. And like, if you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. We're back. We're back at that point now, right? I understood that reference. <laughs> We're back. We're back. It's, said, it's said at the beginning of every podcast. <laughs> this one. Uh, man, just great stuff all around. The Mavericks, a, a, gu a gutsy win, uh, even against a you know, Rockets team that Ahmed Thompson w was you know, fouled out or got fl kicked out with a – ejected with a flagrant. Shangun was out. This Rockets team doesn't really have any – I I'm really made it. Made just it drop kicked out of the game. He uh, Yeah, I got kicked out. Well, <laughs> Shangun wasn't yeah. in. And then this Rockets team doesn't have anything to play for either. Yeah. Like, they, they don't. But they fought really hard, and it didn't look like the Mavericks were going to win this game. They come back and win this game. And, uh, man, an amazing an amazing effort by the Mavericks, I think. Those are the types of wins that, you know, get you wins in, in later in April, May, slightly June. Start, slightly starting to say June. And it's <laughs> well, you, the way that you looked at me made me feel like, feel like I had to then put June in there. I mean, it's the type of game that does get you wins. There yeah. doesn't mean it's guaranteed, but man, amazing. Good for the good for the Mavericks. Absolutely. They didn't lead in this game until two minutes forty eight seconds left in the fourth. First time they led in this game. Doesn't matter. They don't they don't chalk up wins and losses until the game. And then they over. then they tied it to go into overtime. Just an amazing amazing effort by the Mavericks. Uh, huge stuff. Good for the, good for the Mavs. Amazing win. We'll be back tomorrow. I'll talk about playoff scenarios and more stuff like that tomorrow mm. because it's starting to take shape. Clippers won again. They were down by 26. I thought I thought this was going to be a good one for the Mavs to get to get one They're up. They're just trying to be the Mavs. Cool. On the Clippers, but the Cavs just couldn't do the Mavs any favors. Uh, and so go, ch go check out that episode tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back. Go check out Reggie on the fan. When are you on the fan this week? That's a great question <laughs> that I will find out eventually. Think of <laughs> – the first person I've given an opportunity to to be like, hey, plug your stuff. And you're like, dude, I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> I'll be here next week. Yeah, Rich, will be on next week. I think it's the last game of the season. This is, that, that is what I would like to plug, that I'll be here <laughs> on Locked on Mavs next week. <laughs> Shout out to you. Thanks, everybody, for listening to Locked on Mavs. Peace out. <laughs> Boom. He just, he just said, opted out of it. Just <laughs> I do it on KG's <laughs> podcast, too. Oh, man, opted out. <laughs>